Welcome to Faith Revolution Church online Sunday service. It is truly a privilege to worship the Almighty God, and it is truly a blessing to have you join us for our service today. I pray that indeed you would have a wonderful time in the presence of the Almighty God. But to start, as always, in everything we do, let's commit it into the hands of the Mighty King. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory. We appreciate you, God, for this day that you have made. Indeed, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we are before you today, seeking to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father in heaven, we pray that you come and take your place as we, as we worship you today, Father, in the name of Jesus. In everything we do, we pray, Lord, that you will be glorified. In everything we do, O oh God, we pray that every eye will be open to see you. Every ear, O oh God, we hear your voice, all to the glory of your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Again, welcome. And to worship God in spirit and in truth today, what are we going to be doing? The FRC Worship Band, they have prepared wonderful praise unto the Lord. And as they play, as they sing, we will rejoice in the Lord together. And my prayer is that even as we do that, that the host of heaven will rejoice with us in the name of Jesus. Then after that, we'll pray together because God in his infinite mercy hears the cry of his children. So we will pray to the living God together as one, as one people, one family before the living God. And then Pastor Daring will deliver the word of God to us today. What does God have to say? We'll hear it through Pastor Daring later on. So to get right into it, we're here to worship God. So let's praise God together, even as the Faith Revolution Church worship band lead us in praise. <laughs> From the inside, from the inside of me, may you delight in the inside, in the inside of me, come fill my life from the inside. From the inside of me, set me on fire. From the inside, from the inside of me, is all I want is for you, you to be glorified, you to be lifted. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted up. Let praises rise from the inside, from the inside of me. May you be alive. In the inside of me, come fill my life with spirit. From the inside, from the inside. 
you'll be glorified For you to be lifted up All I want, all I want is you, God For you to be glorified For you to be lifted up Thank you, Lord Amen thank God for that praise session and my prayer is that God will always give you a new song that daily God will place his praise on your lips filling you with joy continuously in the name of Jesus right now I want us to pray together because when we approach the throne of grace as a children of the most high God as a collective indeed God hears us amen and today, I want us to consider, I want each and every one of us to consider in our heart, what are we looking to build? When I say build, I mean about life. What are you looking to build in your life? Are you looking to build your family? Are you looking to build a career, a business? Are you looking to build your ministry? Are you looking to build something that that's brand new or something that, you know what, has turned south and you want it to turn northwards again? Are you looking to complete what you've already started? What are you looking to build? And I want us to go before God in prayer concerning this. And I want us to use as an anchor point, I want us to use the instance of Nehemiah in the book of Nehemiah from, using from chapter 1 to chapter 4, using that as our anchor passage. And what did Nehemiah do? He desired to build the wall of Jerusalem because of the news he heard that it was in desolation. And then what did he do? He prayed. So I want us to consider, I want you to consider what you're looking to build. And let's pray about it. And we'll use the steps that Nehemiah took to kind of like just go before God and just seek his face. We are all looking to build something. What does that mean in your life? As we pray, as we pray, put yourself into the prayer by stating to God your heart desires. But as we pray today, I want us to begin by giving glory to the mighty King. Because the book of Psalm chapter 100 verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. As we enter the gates of God and his courts today, I want you to just go before him and just say thank you. Appreciate God for all that he has done for you, all that he is doing, and all that you know you are assured he will do for you. Just go before God and appreciate him and say thank you, my father. Thank you, my God. Thank you, O oh God, for all you've been doing. Father, we appreciate you this day because you are our God. You are the one who continuously, O oh God, does good in our lives. You are always working, O oh God. You are always working for the benefit of your children. For this, Father, we say thank you. Daily you provide for us, O oh God. Daily, O oh God, you give us our daily bread. For this, Father, we know it is all you and we say Thank you. Heavenly Father, you are our protector, O oh God. We are alive today because of you. All our breath, O oh God, is in you. And for this, Father, we give you all the glory. Heavenly Father, you've, been, you've given your angels charge over us to bear us up in their arms so we will not dash our foot against the storm. You have helped us thus far. Heavenly Father, for this we say thank you. And Father, more than ever before, we say thank you, God, for our eternity. Because our eternity is in you. Our hope is in you, O God. We all look forward, O God, to our permanent home in the new Jerusalem, O God. We look forward, O God. To our eternity in you. It is all you. You are our God. You are our Father. You are our friend. You are our wisdom. You are our protector, our provider. You are everything to us, O oh God. You are so faithful. You are so wonderful. All power belongs to you. All your works are wonderful and very good. You are the awesome one, the ancient of days, the one that was, is, and is to come. You are the one who has no shadow of turning. You are the creator of all things. You are our God. And we bless your holy name this day, O oh God. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. 
Amen and amen. As we've given thanks to the living God, and as you've conceived in your heart what you want to build, like Nehemiah, he went to God and articulated it to God. He went to God. He took it to God. So I want you right now, take it to God. As we pray together, articulate to God what you're looking to build, whatever that is in your own life, whether it is your own family, whether it's the work of your hands, whether it is ministry, whatever it is, state it before the living God right now. Let's just go before God and again, appreciate him and he, we have God's ear. So articulate to God what you're looking to build. Father, we come before you, God, with the desires of our heart. Lord God Almighty, I pray, O God, that as your children speak in your hearing right now concerning what they want to build in their lives. Heavenly Father, that you will hear them from heaven in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we have brought it to you, O God, for everyone who is looking to build their home, for every broken home, O God, that wants to be rebuilt, O God, for everyone that wants to build the work of their hands, O God, their career, their business, for everyone who wants advancement, O God, for everyone, O God, who is looking to get into ministry, who is looking to build their ministry in you, O God, for everyone, O God, who is looking to build something new. Heavenly Father, we pray, I pray that indeed you will hear us in the name of Jesus. That Heavenly Father, that you will pave the way. You will make the way out of no way. You will make what seems impossible, possible, O oh God. You will do the great thing, the miraculous, O oh God, you will do. Heavenly Father, not because we say so, but because you are God and you are our God. Be lifted high, be magnified, be exalted. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. When Nehemiah took it to God, he asked God for mercy. He asked God for mercy in the sight of the king. And you know, when God grants you mercy, man has no choice but to also uh, be merciful unto you. He asked God for mercy in the sight of the king. And then when he went, he, when he now prayed and went to the king, he asked the king for favor. So I want you to go before God and ask concerning what you want to build. Ask for God's mercy and ask God for favor wherever you go, wherever you step, wherever you go to build. Ask God for mercy and favor in the name of Jesus. Father in heaven, King of glory, we come before you, God, that concerning what your children are looking to build, that heavenly Father, that wherever they go, whomever they encounter, that they would obtain mercy, wherever they go, in the name of Jesus. And heavenly Father, favor, favor, favor from on high, let it be unto them, O God. Heavenly Father, let it be, O God, concerning what they're looking to build, O God. As, O oh God, they go, as they speak, as they act, O oh God, let it be, O oh God, that they will obtain mercy and favor continuously. Lord, make it all easy for them. Open doors that have been shut tight, O oh God. Heavenly Father, make a way out of no way. Let, O oh God, your favor come upon your children in the name of Jesus. That all, O oh God, may be glor that all they do may glorify your holy name according to your word, O oh God. The works of your children should glorify you. Heavenly Father, let everything they do, let, O oh God, their heart desires, O oh God, what they're looking to build, let it glorify you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus mighty name we are prayed amen as nehemiah proceeded to build the wall a lot of planning was required a lot of wisdom was required in terms of who to interact with who to show who to share the plans with and all of that he required wisdom and god granted it to him i want you to go to god in prayer that Father, concerning what I am looking to build up, Lord, grant me the wisdom to do it right. Grant me the wisdom to do it right in the name of Jesus. Father in heaven, King of glory, all wisdom belongs to you. Father, we're seeking your face for wisdom. As your children conceive in their heart what they want to do, as they conceive in their heart what they want to build, Heavenly Father, let 
heavenly wisdom come upon them, O God. Let heavenly know-how come upon them, O God, that they may take the right step, they may take the right actions, even solutions that have never been heard of. O God, grant unto your children in the name of Jesus. What seems impossible, Heavenly Father, let it suddenly become possible. What seems, O God, beyond their reach, let, O God, let it suddenly fall in their laps in the name of Jesus. All to the glory of your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen and amen. Lastly, I want us to pray. As with everything in life, there are times that the boat will rock back and forth. In creating something, in building something, there might be obstacles in the way. There might be people or things or circumstances or huddles in the way. But God, in his infinite mercy, is able to give you the strength to run through every troop like David, to leap over every wall. It is in the strength of God. Where there is any plotting against you, what God does is that he causes confusion in the camp of the enemy. So I want us to pray to the living God that concerning every obstacle in our way, concerning every wall, concerning every troop, concerning anything that seeks to bring negativity into what you're looking to build, that God in his infinite mercy will give you the strength to run through every troop and leap over every wall, that God in his infinite mercy will cause every plan against you to lead to confusion in the camp of the enemy in the name of Jesus. So let's just go before God concerning every obstacle in your way. The Father, give me the strength. Give me the strength to overcome. Father, that is our heart cry this day, O oh God. We need your strength. We know, Lord, as we seek to build, as we seek to glorify you, O oh God, the enemy always lies in wait. But Lord, your strength is beyond anything the enemy can conceive. We pray, O oh God, and pray over everyone, O oh God, who's praying right now concerning what they're looking to build, that any kind of plan against them, Heavenly Father, bring confusion to that plan in the name of Jesus. Let there be full confusion in the camp of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Concerning your children, O oh God, let it be, O oh God, that it be smooth sailing for them in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, for any kind of obstacle that has arrayed itself against your children as a troop, Heavenly Father, give them the strength to run through that troop in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, for every wall, for every barrier that stands between your children and where they need to get to, Father, give them the strength to leap over that wall in the name of Jesus. That, Father, you will be fully glorified. Every good thing is from you. Heavenly Father, let it be so, O God, unto your children in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name mighty name we have prayed amen and amen father in heaven king of glory we bless your holy name O god we give you all the glory and all the praise you are the one O god who is the enabler for our lives heavenly father as your children have brought forth O god what they want to build as they've laid before you the dreams of their heart heavenly father pray that you will enable each and every one of them O god to complete that build in the name of jesus and pray, Heavenly Father, that they will find strength in you to get to the very end. They will not give up. They will not be tired. They will not be weary in the name of Jesus. Everything they do shall be perfect in you in the name of Jesus. Every home, I pray, is built up. Every career business is built up. Every ministry is built up, O oh God. Every aspect of every life is built up in you in the name of Jesus. Be lifted, High Father. Be magnified. Be exalted. And Father, we thank you, O God, for a time, O God, of togetherness, a time of worshiping you as one. Lord, as we are before you today to worship you, we pray, Lord, that you continue to be with us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty and awesome name, we are prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. Continue to seek God's face, God's ear is never closed to his children. And if you are not born again, and you know you don't have God's ear, I pray by the power of the living God that you will reach out to Christ. 
he will indeed take your hand. His hand is always outstretched. Take hold of his hand and it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, welcome to you all into today's service. We have gone through praising God. We have prayed to the living God. Now we would hear the word. But before we hear the word that God has specially prepared for you today, I want to encourage you to do a couple of things regarding, you know, this is a virtual worship, regarding our virtual worship, the way we feel your connection with us is when you like our videos and you place your comments on it and you subscribe to our channel and you share the video, you know, all these things that happen online. So I want to encourage you to please continue to do that. If you haven't done so already, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so, so that we can continue to connect with each other. These are the ways that we know that you are there. And more so, you can connect with us directly by going on our website. You can all, you can, you know, send us messages on there. You can find out more of who we are. And our website is faithrevolution.ca. Faithrevolution.ca. You can connect with us like that. And if you prefer to just send an email, you can send me an email at pastor at faithrevolution.ca pastor at faithrevolution.ca and we're more than happy to hear from you. It will be a wonderful thing. So keep smiling, let your heart be filled with joy and prepare your heart as Pastor Derry delivers the word of God to us today. Hi, my name is Derry Bello and I will be bringing you the word of God today. Before we jump into the word, let's take a quick prayer. Everlasting Father, ancient of days I am that I am, want to thank you for bringing us together um, we want to thank you, Lord, for your word that you're going to reveal to us today. Lord, I pray for everyone that is listening today. I ask that today's word be a word in season, will be a word of encouragement, will be a word of transformation, that we might leave today all the more renewed, King Almighty, knowing that you're doing a great thing in our lives. To the glory of your name, in the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for praying with me. Um, so I have titled today's word, Celebrating Small Beginnings. Um, and it's something I think that's pretty, pretty um, important. And frankly, a shift in mindset that we could all do it. Um, but before I jump um, into what I want to share today, I definitely want us to, first of all, go into the word of God and try to, you know, hear what the word of God says about this topic. And then from there, um, I can start kind of like teaching and explaining as the Holy Spirit guides. Amen. So we're going to read from the word of God. And I do read from Zechariah chapter four. I read from verse eight to 10 and I'm reading the amplified version. Again, Zechariah chapter four from verse eight to 10. And I read right now. Also, the word of the Lord came to me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundations of this house and his hands will finish it. Then you will know, recognize, understand fully that the Lord of hosts has sent me as his messenger to you. Who with reason despises the day of small things beginnings? For, for this seven eyes shall rejoice when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel, they are the eyes of the Lord which roam throughout the earth. Lord bless the reading of his word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There's some words there within that verse that are not very, very common words. So I'm going to probably start with that. Um, there's a reference to something called the plumb line. And unless it's just a tool that construction workers, carpenters use, to make sure things are straight. And so within the biblical context, it talks about things being straightened, you know, whether, and within the, um, within the context of construction, within the context of building, rebuilding foundations, getting to things that are straight and right with God. The other um, word that's, that seems, you know, not very um, clear here um, is the use of, for this seven eyes shall rejoice when they see, and this is just in reference to God's oversight of the world and its inhabitants. And within the context of this verse, it's just talking about God's delight in the, in the reconstruction of the temple. Um, still talking about the Bible verse, because I just want us to get a bit more context about the Bible verse here. 
Um, the, the Bible verse is really about someone called Zerubbabel. And so it's not someone that is um, very popular in the Bible. You know, like if I say Moses, most of you know who Moses is. If I say David, you'll get your David is. Um, Zerubbabel was a religious leader. And um, historians will place him um, 70 years post-captivity of Israel. As we all know, the Israelites were taken into captivity to Babylon. And so Zerubbabel was the religious leader that was sent back um, to Israel to rebuild the temple. And so he came definitely before Nehemiah. Nehemiah rebuilt the wall. Um, Zerubbabel came first of all with the first set of exiles to rebuild the temple. So, you know, when you think about the state, he found the land. He didn't find the land in a good state, right? Um, think about, you know, post-war, you know, where some people are taking exile and maybe some people are left behind in the mess and then this person comes from nowhere and is trying to rebuild the temple right so you can imagine the tension he had to face and you can imagine even the state of the land um, when he came in so that is the persona of Zerubbabel so when we go back to that bible verse just reading it again I think it will be a bit more clearer now so we said the word of the Lord came to me saying so still re re um, just reading that verse again in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 8 to 10 the word of the Lord came to me saying so we know from this verse that this is God's word this God's word was sent to the prophet Zechariah so we know the book we're reading Zechariah so this was Zechariah talking so the word of the Lord came to me saying the ends of Zerubbabel so Zerubbabel like we said now is this religious leader that has come back from exile Back to Israel. So the ends of Zerubbabel have laid the foundations of this house. The house in question, like I explained, is the temple that's been rebuilt. Um, and his ends will finish it. So we're thinking about a post um, in the future. You can say we'll finish it. So the Bible isn't saying it is finished. His ends will finish it. It's still work in progress. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Who despises the day of small beginnings and i'm going to stop there because you know the title of today's sermon is celebrate small beginnings and a lot of our um conversation today is going to really be tied to that 10a which is um verse 10a which says who which reason despises the day of small things small beginnings so what would you call a small beginning when you hear the word small beginning, what words come to your mind? Just take a step to think through it. So, I would, I would say there's a lot of overlap in the description small beginnings and humble beginnings. That's the first piece. I would say when I think of the word small beginnings, I don't think of anything glamorous. Nothing dazzling comes to mind. It's, it has a connotation of loads of work, slogging um, towards an accomplishment, towards a goal. It's definitely not being king of the eel or top of the eel or top of the pile. Um, it's a connotation of, you know, in some instances, insignificance, non-relevancy. And those are some of the words, you know, people can use in reference to the word small beginnings. Within the context of the conversation today, I would also want to think about small beginnings within the context of things. Small seeds, small resources, you know, think about the widow's might, you know, those are the small little things you can have, you have that you can use to influence, right? Um, because there's a lot of, you know, you, you also think about small resources within the context of small beginnings because more often than not it's a small beginning because you don't have a lot if you know what i mean some of the things that characterize you being in a season of small beginning is you probably don't have a lot of resources you don't have a lot of assets you don't have a lot of finances you don't have a lot of know-how um, you're learning and so this, these are some of the things um, that we can think about when we're talking about small beginning now the word of God here says, do not despise the days of small beginning. When you think about what it means to despise something, it means do not ridicule, do not snore, do not 
think of it as insignificant do not um do not loathe yes small beginnings you know now when we say that you will think that um you know we're talking within the context of someone loathing another person's small beginning or someone you know snobbing or glossing over another person's small beginning now that is a valid fact you know when people are in their season of small beginnings uh you know sometimes you know people look at you people look down at you people think you're insignificant people don't reckon with you but i would like to put it to you also that it's not just people even you yourself in your small beginnings tend to despise your small beginnings why do i say this have you heard anyone brag about their small beginnings like it was a thing of pride no more often than not, the instinct is to hide, is to cover, is to pretend, is to ignore, um, is to stay your lane and not talk to it. Um, so the despising of the small beginning can come from the outward looking into you, can actually come also from you. But we want to talk about why you should not despise your small beginnings but why you should celebrate your small beginnings. Taking me again to the title of the word today, which is celebrate your small beginnings. Amen. Now, I want to talk about what and why you should celebrate your small beginning. Why small beginnings? You know, and, and I have four key headings to talk about as to reasons why you should celebrate your for your small beginnings but the one thing i want to talk to you overall before we jump into this is this is the word of god telling us you know this was a revelation to the prophet zerubbabel sorry zechariah to zerubbabel saying do not despise the day of small beginnings why honest there's a lot of purpose to small beginnings and small beginnings truly are essential to getting us sometimes to the purpose that God has for us. And an analogy is very simple. Someone that wakes up, that was born with a silver spoon, that had everything available to them, will struggle truly to understand the dignity of work. Because they did not have the opportunity to go through the journey of having nothing to become something of consequence. So as a result, the whole essence of dignity of work will be a foreign thing to them. And that frankly will shape who they are and their thinking. That is just a simple analogy for you to understand that you in a small beginning doesn't mean you forever be in a small beginning and that is a prayer for you in jesus name but the journey from starting to small beginning to where you want to get to from a purpose shapes you in such a way that by the time you get there you're truly shaped into who god wants you to be and we'll talk a bit about this so like i said i really have four key headings and i already started playing around with the first heading and the first thing i want to tell you about why you want to celebrate your small beginnings is your character is shaped from your small beginning your character is shaped from your small beginning i just shared the analogy of the person born with a silver spoon they haven't had the character that's a shape that helps them to understand the dignity of work. And so the journey creates something in you that helps you understand who you be, understand better when you actually become. I wanna read from Romans chapter five from verse three to four and I read, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope 
Now, when we dwell on that God's word, you could almost see even a bit of the things you learn on this journey, on your small beginnings. The trials come. The challenges come. But what it does is it produces, the word of God says, a fruit of perseverance in you. Patience, long-suffering. And that in itself produces character. And that in itself produces hope. We need to release ourselves and allow ourselves to be shaped and molded by the experiences we go through from our small beginnings to becoming what God wants us to be. You want to be asking yourself along the way as you face the trials that what is God teaching me here? What is God telling me? And from a pragmatic perspective, you also want to be asking yourself simple questions around what capabilities am I learning from this experience? What capabilities am I re and what competences am I learning here? What emotional intelligence is being developed in me as I go, as I grow, and as I start from my small beginnings to becoming who God wants me to be? There has to be that check, constant check, to understand what character am I being that is being formed in me. So truly, truly, in your small beginnings, your character is truly formed and it's truly shaped. Amen. The second thing I want to talk about, I talked to the first is your character is shaped in your small beginnings. The second is your attitude in your small beginnings is extremely vital. So your character might be shaped and you might be dealing with some real present issues. But what's the attitude that's showing up? Bitterness, anger, resentment, that won't move you forward. So I want to talk about some attitudes that really helps us get through our small beginnings to what God wants us to become. The first piece is humility, right? And honest, your small beginnings, we all know, already keeps you humble, right? Now, you're faced with humility and, you know, so um, let, let, me, let, me, let me put it this way, let me be careful. You're faced with humble situations, but it's your choice to learn humility from it or it's your choice to resent it. Now, if your small beginnings are putting you in humble situations and you're truly releasing yourself to, you know, the humility, what happens is then the blessings that come from humility can come onto you. The word of God says in James chapter 4 verse 6, it says God gives grace to the humble. The other piece also is James 4.10, he also says he lifts up, like the word actually is he exalts those that are humble. Those are consequences to the behavior and the behavior being humble. But again, if the attitude is wrong and you see your humble surroundings, but it's resentment and, you know, the wrong behavior is coming out of it, then the blessings and promises of you being humble will not come to you. So that's the first attitude that's very important. How do you show, how do you respond to your humble circumstances? The second piece is diligence. You have to be extremely diligent in your small beginnings. The word of God again in Proverbs 22, 29, I read is, do you see a man who excels in his work? The King James Version says, do you see a man who is diligent in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. Diligence is what's going to take you from where you are at the back of the bus to standing before kings. Now, I want to be very careful. I'm not talking about just work for the sake of work. 
I'm talking about diligence that is fueled by the wisdom of God. When you find yourself in a season of small beginning, you want to reach out to the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you how to be diligent in all wisdom. And I say this because I've seen people very diligent in the factory work, but they are not diligent with the wisdom of God. And frankly, they find themselves becoming hewers of wood and carriers of water their entire life. And I do not believe that is God's will for any one of us. There's a way that we can lean on the Holy Spirit to grant us the wisdom when we're in our small beginnings and to show us how and how we need to be diligent, strategies for us to be efficient, so that our diligence, which our diligence will truly take us to stand before kings and not mere men. So we talked about humility as an attitude diligence is a second one now another thing i want to talk about that is also an attitude that is very important that you hold on to even when you're in your season of um, small beginnings is what i like to package as focus steadfastness and drive i have seen people start in small beginnings and give up so many times honest i'm not even gonna tell a lie there are things i have started and it was in small beginnings and i got tired and i just could not keep going and i could not keep focused and i let it go and of course those things did not get anywhere for us to get from our small beginnings to our place of becoming we need focus we need steadfastness and we need a drive okay it's not about you looking for shortcuts it's not about you looking for ways out it's about you just having focus consistent steadfastness and keep driving towards what you know god has told you now it means you have to be prepared to push past mountains it means you have to be prepared to push past limitations it means you have to be prepared to deal with things along the way in fact if you read Zechariah the, the the Bible verse which we which we shared chapter 4 from the very beginning one of the initial verses before we got to 8 to 10 which we shared talks about a prayer being made you know that basically says who are you this mountain before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain land and so when you think about that in the full context even Zerubbabel came to the land and there was a lot of seemingly impossible things standing in his ways like mountains you need to be able to stand in prayer before God and say Lord I am focused I am steadfast help me remove every mountain of limitation as I keep my eyes on you because those mountains have to go you can't be confronted by those mountains and then run away in the wrong direction because at that point in time you have failed you won't be able to face onto those mountains and speak god's word and command those mountains to be moved as you focus on what god has told you to do so now i want to share some words that i think we also want to keep in mind as we think about focus steadfastness and drive as an attitude in small beginnings proverbs chapter 24 verse 10 i read it says if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small if you see that mountain and you run the wrong direct in the other direction your strength is small you're not able to build capacity, which is something that's very important for you to also build as you move from your place of small beginnings to your place of becoming. And Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 says, whatever we do, whatever it is that God has given us to do, let us do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. So if I was going to bring this, even to just very pragmatic um, terms. You're starting off. 
with your days of small beginnings. You're having to do a bit of skip the dishes, Uber grocery, um, Instacart, to make ends meet. While you're doing it, no one's looking at you as you're slugging away. But God is seeing you. Be focused. Be steadfast. Do it well. Whether men are looking or men are not looking. Do it well. Do it excellently well. As unto the Lord, not unto men. Amen to that. The other piece from an attitude which I want to bring in terms of that's very important as we come from our place of small beginnings to our place of becoming is loyalty and honor. Loyalty to God, loyalty to our parents, loyalty and honor, sorry, to God, loyalty and honor to our parents and also to the people that God has placed around us as coaches, as mentors, as spiritual leaders, as guides. It is very, very important. You know, I was thinking about it. You know, the word of God says, and I read from Ephesians 6, verse 1 to 3. It talks about children obeying their parents. Verse 2 says, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. That it may be well with you, one, and you may live long on the earth. Even as kids, as teenagers, when we're starting, that is our small beginnings. The people that are in charge of us at that very early stage are our parents. We honor them. When we get out of our homes and we're trying to find our way, you know, God will bring people along us, around us, that are mentors, our coaches. You know, how do we show ourselves loyal to them and, you know, honor the gift that God has placed in them, that, that, that they're blessing us, that they're using to bless us. Right? So it's very, very important that that attitude already also remains. You know, I say this, you know, and I keep learning also every day that you really can't become what you can't honor. You see someone that's really doing so well, that God has blessed, that has become what you hope to become. But when you see that person or you and you look down at that person or you think mm, this person ain't good enough or she's like, you know, just look for all the flaws and everything in a very nasty way so i'm talking the very nasty negative way y you know you can't become that and i'm talking in terms of from christian perspective you know people that have walked with god that god has blessed as god has lifted up and you see and you kind of like scorn you know god's gift in them or you kind of like you know ignore it or you know you you say negative things. You pull it down. That's the key thing. The key thing is you pull it down. You can't become what you can't honor. Because those people were in their place of beginnings. God, they walked with God to get to where they are. You coming in and saying something negative, you know, or disregarding the grace of God over those lives doesn't necessarily help you in any way whatsoever and it's definitely not an, the attitude that God rewards the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus the last attitude that's very important and I think this goes without saying consistency in your walk with God consistency and the context I want to provide for this is this um I use the word consistency because I've heard in talking to certain individuals where, you know, you tell them about serving God, you know, being more active in God's kingdom, um, even believing and just trusting God, accepting God as the personal Lord and Savior. And I, you know, I've heard many times and, you know, I'm talking to young adults and, and they respond and they say, oh, I'm too young right now. I'll get to that when I'm older. I'll get to that when I'm married with kids. I want to make my money. I want to make my millions. You know, I want to be very rich first, and then I can serve God. I want to be very, um, I want to, I want to become big and great first, and then I can think about God. Now, for me, that's not the way it works. You know, 
what you can't give or do for God in your small beginnings. It's going to be pretty, pretty difficult for you to do it for God when you get to your place of becoming. Accept the grace of God prevails over your life and you truly have a divine counter that shakes you. If it's about you being a Christian from your small beginnings, but you're still not willing to dedicate yourself fully till you become. That is not biblical. God wants you where you are. He's not waiting for you to be great before you submit to him and to his work. He's not waiting for you to have it all figured out. He uses the broken things. He doesn't use the perfect things. So I think it's very, very important that we pay attention to that piece. And this is an amazing segue to my third point. The first point was about our small beginnings. It does shape our character. The second point was the attitude we have in our time of small beginning is very vital. And this third piece is, God truly loves small beginnings and he loves using small things to do great things. Like I just said, he wants you where you are. He's not waiting for you to be all perfect and to be fully, you know, to be one great rich person before he can use you. I want to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. It says, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty. We see from our Bible verse, God sending that word through Zechariah saying, do not despise the days of small beginnings. He was sending a word of encouragement to Zerubbabel for the work that he was doing. He said that don't despise the small, the days of small beginning. It says the hand of Zerubbabel started this in its small infancy. And the hand of Zerubbabel will complete and finish it. That was such a great encouragement to the work that Zerubbabel was doing. Time and time and time again, we see God use small things to do great things. We see God use people in small beginnings to do great things. In fact, it is a very consistent pattern in God's word. He used Zerubbabel, like we said, to accomplish the great task of rebuilding the temple. He used the boy with five loaves and two fishes. He said, what do you have? Five loaves? and two fishes, my lunch, he used it to feed thousands. The math does not work. No way you can do the math. That was something tiny. Five loaves, two fishes, thousands were fed. Something small, something insignificant, something other people would look down on, you know, I can imagine me inviting, you know, someone to help me, case in point, a caterer, and say, oh, I have this event, I need to feed 5,000 people. And the caterer asks me, okay, so what do you have? And I'm like, I have five loaves and two fishes. Someone's going to think I have a screw loose. But he used that. He used David as a shepherd boy to slay Goliath. He also used manna, that tiny thing, to feed 
the Israelites for 40 years in the wilderness. That is a consistent pattern in God's word. 1 Corinthians, again, chapter 1, verse 28 to 30. Just a continuation of what I read, but now I'm reading this piece of it in Amplified Version. It says, God has selected for his purpose the insignificant base things of the world and the things that are despised and treated with contempt, even the things that are nothing, so that he might reduce to nothing the things that are her, so that no one may be able to boast in the presence of God. Did you see the use of the word despise? So there's an intentionality in the way God operates. And this verse helps us understand a bit of the intentionality. It says, so that no one may be able to boast in the presence of God. When you see someone that you know the small beginnings of the person, and you see God raise them to be something mighty. There's a, there's, there's a clear, deep understanding that resonates in you that this is not man. This could only be God's mercy. It is so that no one can share the glory. Even you as an individual. When you think about your days of really small Beginnings where you've slogged, oh God, where you have really been dealt a tough hand by life. And you see how far God has brought you. You, 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 you are left with, you know, a conviction of God's mercy over you. You are left with a conviction of God's hand over you that this definitely could not have been you. I think about it day and night for myself, for my family, my husband and I. When I think about the journey which we're, we have been on over the past 19, 20 years in Canada, where we started from as a young couple to where we are now, I have a full conviction that it was God and no one else. Now, are there areas in my life where, although God has taken me all the way here in certain areas of my life, but in this part of my life, I feel like I've been in small beginnings for the past like six, seven years. Yes. But I have the testimony of what is done in certain areas of my life. And those testimonies fill me with the conviction that the one that was faithful to take me from small beginnings in this season of my life to something great in this part of my life is able to take do the same in this other area of my life. I don't know what area of your life where you know you are in small beginnings and you know that you know you are in a state of people looking down at you of insignificance and you need God to show up. I want you to remember his faithfulness in other parts of your, of your life and hold on to the testimonies of what he has done in the past, knowing that he that has done that is faithful to do the one you need him to do right now. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. So just doing a quick time check and we have one more to talk about so we talked about number one it builds character number two our attitude is vital number three god loves small beginnings and he uses small things to do great things the last piece i want to talk to is number four the things you learn oh my gosh the things you learn in your small beginnings will unlock your greatness the things you learn in your small beginning will unlock your greatness. Now, this is so important. This is truly applicable in every area of our lives. Workplace, marriage, um, in our businesses, in our service in God's ministry. The things we learn while we're slogging away 
<laughs> they are the things that unlock greatness for us. And when it unlocks the greatness, all of a sudden you are able to look back and you understand why you had to go through it. It becomes really clear because you realize that all the things you learned along the way prepared you for your place of becoming. And I just want to use some simple case studies, very simplistic case studies, but just to help you understand what I mean. Let us start with David. We talked about God using David as a small, you know, or someone that had a small beginning to do something great to Goliath. But let's take a step back. How was Goliath slain? Goliath was slain with a sling. How and when? did David learn to use a sling? It was while he was in his place of small beginnings, taking care of his father's sheep. And he had few opportunities to do a bit of test drive because the Bible talked about how he had slain a bear and another big animal, you know, that had come to steal his sheep. He was doing all that test drive where <laughs> while he was taking care of sheep he learned how to properly use a sling he learned how to pick the right stones for the sling he learned how to use the sling to project by force and put power behind the stones he learned all of that in his place of small beginnings by the time he got the opportunity to be, you know, up there, out in the open, he didn't fumble because he had had a lot of opportunity to do test drive. One time, Goliath came down. If you don't learn as you should in the place of your small beginnings and they give you a platform, you will fail because all the training you were supposed to do in your place of small beginning. You didn't devote yourself to the learning because you were trying to use shortcuts. And so by the time you're given a platform, the platform swallows you. We see that all the time. When people try to force their gender, when people try to force their way to their place of be becoming, you know, and, you know, to get to, you know, new levels, those levels swallowed them because they skipped the preparation. Amen. The, another example was Joseph. Joseph started with pride, but we all know the story that brought him to be a servant in Potiphar's house. He was a diligent servant to the point that Potiphar made him the head of his household. So that means it was dealing with everything administrative in Potiphar's house. He was dealing with, you know, what are we buying? What goods do we need? Who do we need to pay? You know, probably the accounts of the house, making sure that the house was running as it should. He learned all of that when he was a servant in Potiphar's house. By the time God granted him an, an audience, before the ruler of Egypt. He had had a lot of time to practice. He had had also a lot of time to build his integrity and consistency with God. He had had a lot of time to also know his God. So that by the time he got there and he was made the administrator of all of Egypt, he did not fail because practice time was over. He had done the practice. He had learned. The skills he learned enabled him for the work. And for Joseph, it wasn't just the skills he learned. Also, the work he had with God, even revealed in the gifts of visions and dreams, being able to listen to God and interpret the dreams also took him all the way. So his gifts, competences, capabilities, 
from a functional perspective and also a spiritual gift, which, you know, he had leaned in on to grow in his work with God, made the way for him. Hallelujah. I actually do love the example of Joseph. My last example is David. Sorry, it's Daniel. Daniel is pretty, pretty simple. Daniel's was a case of they stayed consistent with God. They made the choices never to defile themselves when they were brought in as slaves. They, and these choices they made not to fall into pattern, not to go outside of what they believed, to frankly even sacrifice um, their, 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 um, their desires for certain types of food, set them apart from the very beginning from all the captives. And that basically kept setting them apart, even in their place of captivity, and took Daniel all the way to becoming one of the wisest men in the land. There's a lot of things we learn in our place of small beginnings, whether you're doing a business, whether you're serving God. I can tell you many things I learned while I was in my place of small beginnings serving God that have set me apart in my career and taken me to my place of becoming. For many years, I had the opportunity to serve, managing the mass choir, and I had to do a lot, of, a lot of administration, working with a lot of people, managing with people, talking to people. And it was never easy, you know. There were times when, you know, when you're working with people and everything is volunteer, you there are people that, you know, God bless them, you know, would appreciate what God is doing in your life. And you thank God for people like that. But there are much more people that will tell you every chance they get that maybe you don't know what you're doing or you said something, you know. And true it all, it was a learning. There were things I had to learn, frankly, about myself. There are things I had to take a step back to use to refine myself. But I want to tell you that having had to deal with that for years, by the time God opened doors for me in my workplace, and I found myself managing people to that amount. I wasn't scared. I wasn't overwhelmed because God had given me a practice run for almost 10 years. So the same way I have been leaning on God to help me in that ministry with the mass choir. It's the same way I am now leaning on God to help and direct me. I want to leave you with this encouragement as I finish today. Never forget that there is a time for everything. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Your purpose will not be shortchanged in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Lord will bring you to your time in the mighty name of Jesus. Abacup, Abacup 2 says, write the vision. That the vision is for an appointed time. I pray for you today that you will not miss out on your appointed time of becoming in the mighty name of Jesus. That the Lord will take every seed of small beginning in you. That men, as men have despised, that men have made significant, and as the mustard seed grows from being the least seed to being a great tree with many branches, the Lord will create greatness in you in the mighty name of Jesus. I encourage you today to celebrate your small beginning and have the assurance that the Lord that has brought you so far is faithful to complete all that he has begun in you. You will come to your season of greatness. You will come to your season of joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 66 verse 12 verse 13 says, You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire 
and true water. But you brought us out to a rich fulfillment. Some version says, you brought us out to our place of abundance or to our wealthy place. I pray for you today that the Lord will strengthen you as you go through the waters and the fires and your small beginnings. And the Lord will bring you out. God will bring you out to your place of fulfillment in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will bring you out to your place of abundance, to your place of increase, to your place, to your wealthy place, to your place of becoming according to his purpose. So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for listening to me. God bless you. And I look forward to connecting with you sometime in the future. Bye-bye now. Amen. God's word is powerful. And to us, his children, his word is like honey in sweetness. I pray that word will indeed bless you or has indeed blessed you mightily. And I pray that as you go into the week ahead, that you are fully energized and encouraged. And God indeed will favor you in all you do in the name of Jesus. As we round up today's service, I want us to pray together and bless ourselves accordingly as well. Father, we give you all the glory. We appreciate you, God, for a time of rejoicing before you, a time of worship, a time of fellowship with you. Thank you for being with us, O oh, oh God. Thank you for accepting our worship. Father in heaven, we give you all the glory. And Lord God Almighty, I pray for everyone that has been a part of this service, that, oh God, in your might and in your power, that you will favor each and every one of them, even as they go into the week ahead, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that wherever they go, you will go with them, in the name of Jesus. Wherever they step, they will find favor in your sight, in the name of Jesus. That shall be well with them all around. And Father, we look forward to coming together again next week to worship you as one. Bless and keep us till then in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. And as always, as we close, let's bless ourselves with the words of 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 16, and Psalm 23, verse 6. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week, and we we'll hope to see you again next week. Bye-bye.